A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading for Sunday the 24th of May from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Then Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, 
So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the ascension of Jesus and it's really good to share some thoughts with you. I always thought that when men in white coats arrived it was a bad sign but in our reading from Acts they bring words of consolation and hope to the disciples. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The ascension of Jesus is a tricky one to get one's head around. I think there are two difficulties for me and I'm sure some of this will chime with you. The first is the idea of Jesus going up into heaven. And of course, we get in art uh, and frescoes and stained glass those wonderful images of Jesus with his legs dangling below the clouds. Of course, we live in a scientific world. We know that Jesus couldn't easily go up to heaven because if Jesus literally went up, he would go into orbit and probably never make it to his father. Of course, the natural law could have been suspended for a while. But maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't see heaven as a place, but as a reality. Jesus goes back to the reality that he's God. And it's a reality that touches and intercepts with our lives at various times and points. Perhaps seeing earth below and heaven above, with Jesus ascending like a spaceman between the two seems a little fanciful. But seeing earth and heaven as crossing over, interrelating and interlapping at various points as the divine breaks into the everyday is surely a more useful way of making sense of the boundary between earth and heaven. 
Therefore, the ascension of Jesus is important because it's the permanent crossing over of the human person of Jesus into the divine life. The other problem, of course, is that we can often talk about the ascension of Jesus like a homecoming. Uh, he's gone back to his father after the completion of the divine plan. Of course, that's what the words of the creed sort of imply, that uh, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father. For me, that seems to play down the significance of the ascension, treating it a bit like the end of a chapter or uh, a happy ending, rather like E.T., who, of course, in the film, does indeed go home. I want to suggest that there are perhaps two very significant strands to this very significant celebration in the life of the church. Firstly, the ascension for the early church was very much about Christ's kingship and rule. St Paul himself seems to focus on this. He writes that Christ is far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. For the early church, the ascension is a reminder to us that Christ is king and ruler over the world. With Christ as king and the spirit to lead the church into all truth, we know that we too can be, to use St Paul's language, conquerors. It may not be language that we use readily, but it's what the early church thought of as the meaning in the ascension. For many of us, sadly, the ascension probably implies Jesus' absence, not his universal presence and sovereign rule. I think it's worth pondering. We need to try and see the ascension in terms of how being subjects to a kingly rule impacts on our lives. And that, of course, may be uncomfortable and may raise many questions as we look more closely at ourselves and our motivations. The second way that I think we can approach the ascension has been suggested by Rowan Williams. He suggests that we see our own brokenness and suffering and our pain, the things that make us human, the things we feel so acutely at this horrendous time in the middle of the pandemic, that we see these parts of our humanity as being taken up into the Godhead by the ascension of Jesus. For him, the ascension confirms that the humanity that God entered into in the incarnation, in the babe of Bethlehem, is taken back into the Godhead so that humanity is forever part of God. Rowan Williams wrote this. Our humanity, in all its variety, in all its vulnerability, has been taken by Jesus into the heart of the divine life. The humanity that we all know to be stained, wounded, imprisoned in various ways. This humanity, yours and mine, is still capable of being embraced by God, shot through with God's glory, received and welcomed in the burning heart of reality itself. So if humanity is forever a part of God, then surely God gets us in a new way. God is for us. He gets the way that we are, warts and all, because our humanity is part of him. In Jesus, God has scooped back humanity into the divine life. God blesses it and transforms it. All that we are, the good bits and the bad bits, is taken up into the loving arms of God 
and cherished. And God's response is to send us the most exuberant, challenging, exciting and creative power, the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, to transform us, that we may go out and transform the world. So today, as we celebrate the ascension of Jesus, it's truly a day to rejoice. Not because Jesus has gone home, but because Jesus is king and we are deeply loved subjects, despite all our flaws. Jesus reigns over all things. And if we are to be his disciples, will reign over us with all the difficulty that that path of discipleship demands. But all the difficulty in following Jesus, all the frailty of our nature, is known by God and part of God. God, in the ascension, scooped up humanity into the divine life forever. So unlike the men of Galilee, let's not look up to the heavens, but deeper into ourselves and allow more of the kingly rule of Jesus into our lives. For God does not rule from a place, but from a reality. And that reality is deep inside us all. Amen. The Lord has sent death upon high, the Lord has triumphed o'er the sea, in power and light excelling. The great ones have a captive led, no he returns a glorious head to his eternal. Risen and ascended Lord, you promise to be with us always. Help us to be aware of your presence and to walk in the way that leads to glory. Lord Jesus, you came down to lift us up. You descended that we may ascend. Help us to know you. Give us the gift of vision that we may see beyond the everyday to your loving purposes for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We long for the time when the kingdoms of the world shall become your kingdom. We pray for our rulers and leaders, that they may accept your peace. We pray for all in positions of authority, that they may rule with justice and with kindness. We pray for those who feel neglected and alone in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we give you thanks for your transforming power in our homes and relationships. We bring before you the needs of our families, our friends and our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who are ill or afraid at this time, those whose powers are waning, those who are facing their death or the death of one they love. May they know the power of your hope and of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice that you are our great High Priest who has ascended into heaven, where you intercede for us. Lord, may we join our prayer with yours as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you.